The United States Navy SEAL platoons project power far beyond their small 16-man size. The success of their mission doesn't just rely on weapons or technology, but on the specialized training of the individual SEAL operator. They come from all walks of life, from all across the American landscape. Most have some measure of athletic ability. Over a third have college degrees. They all share a common goal, to become a member of the most elite team in the world, the United States Navy SEALs. Each year, 600 to 800 young men attempt the basic underwater demolition SEAL training, or BUDS, at the Naval Special Warfare Center in Coronado, California. But only one third complete the rigorous 25 week transition from sailor to seal. Let's go, let's go. This is the story of one such group, Class 224. You get treated like the absolute lowest form on earth, and you really got to find it within yourself to say, you know, I know I can do it, I know I can finish it, I know I can do anything they throw at me. Uh, that's where it builds character. You find out if you got it in yourself. Uh, if you can just block everything out and just focus on that brass ring, you know, of getting through the six months of hell. First phase is really the phase that's going to separate the men from the boys. When these guys come here, they really don't know what to expect, so uh, we're going to push them. We're going to push them hard. We're going to see what they have. And the guys that want to be here, no matter what we do or say, they want to be a SEAL, they're going to be a SEAL. That's, that's, that's all there is to it. Physically, Buds is a real butt kicker. Just having the mental fortitude of not only trying to get through the PT sessions, but also getting through the lack of sleep, having instructors on your back, being hurt all the time. All those things start, start taking a play into it during the day, and it's uh, just having the idea of there's nothing that's going to stop me from finishing this training or finishing this evolution. That's what gets you through it. I believe that uh, Bud builds teamwork and character by uh, weeding out the weak, bringing the strong together to survive the training. I don't think any one man can make it alone through Bud. I'm gonna stay in this position till you guys lock it up. Come on! I'll just stay all day. I'd say the obstacle uh, courses never blow my expectations. It's some of the best training you can get. Because you gotta think on your feet, you gotta act, you gotta move, you gotta be fast, you gotta be safe. You can really hurt yourself. Who y'all loves? Christian in first phase is pretty high. Like I say, it's, um, it's, a, it's a really fast-paced phase, and these guys are constantly moving and grooving every second of every day, except for when they're eating. So um, the guys, when they hear about SEAL training, they're like, well, all you have to do is run, all you have to do is an O course, anything like that. Not really that big a deal. But once you start putting everything together, and the days are endless, that's when uh, guys decide that this really isn't for me. I'm not, I don't want to be wet. I don't want to be cold. Uh, this pace right here is not for me. That's what's going to happen when they leave here. They go to SEAL Team. The, the pace is just like that. It never ends. It's just about everything at Buds is a, is a timed evolution or it's a, it's a race. Uh, it builds camaraderie with the guys. They, they take their boats and they'll race out through the surf zone. Sometimes the boats will flip over on them because the surf gets so big. It's quite an experience to be paddling the rubber boat and facing this eight-foot wall of water coming at you. It's just going to destroy you and you know, send you tumbling around. And there's almost like a washing machine effect in the water. What we're looking for from a recruit, number one, he has to have the physical skills to complete the training. Two, he has to have the mental aptitude, because we're not just a bunch of knuckle draggers. You have to have some mental skills as well. 4210. We don't look for any kind of personality. There's all sorts of different kind of personalities in, in the teams. But we're looking for a guy that, that's willing to sacrifice and can work well with others in a, in a teamwork environment. I think the evolutions that cause the most problems are the water evolution. Some of these kids are from Wyoming, it's different places where they haven't even seen the water, or at least the surf zone, they're not really too comfortable in the water. And you're doing drown proofing where your hands are tied behind your back, your feet are tied up, they don't like that. Drown proofing, I think it's more of a mental thing than a physical evolution. It's all about trying to stay calm and being comfortable in the water. Half of our class uh, failed it the first time they went through, and I think it's because they have a mental block of, of the idea of not having control. You just gotta, you know, have confidence in yourself and, and saying, you know, I've done this before, I can float on the water. 3,000 guys have done it before I have, you know, why can't I do it? It's a, it's a mental thing. Hell Week, the most dreaded week of buds. 
It's the ultimate test of one's physical and mental motivation. A round-the-clock regimen of intensive physical training and harassment with as little as four hours of sleep during the entire week. Let's go. Get your butt up here. All the way up on the rocks. And get all the way up. That week is five and a half days long. Uh, the class is divided into boat crews. Teamwork is a, is a key issue um, during Hell Week. They're up for five days doing various evolutions that stress teamwork, cold, wet conditions again come into factor. And, and this is a, an indicator of uh, what kind of a man is going to come out the other end. You'll, you'll never be challenged anywhere the way that you're challenged in Hell Week. I mean, It'll test your, it'll test your soul to the very core of your being. You'll know exactly what your limitations are and what you're capable of doing when you get done with hell work. And then not being able to sleep and just, you know, falling asleep standing up. Are you sleeping? Yes. During hell week, I found I could fall asleep while I was underneath the boat while running. It's just a, a, a week of <laughs> intense emotion and, uh, and, and pain and cold and misery. And sometimes you thought it couldn't get any worse, um, but it did. <laughs> guys who went away, uh, the only thing I can say about them is that they just decided that it wasn't going to be part of their life. You have to want it, because if you don't or you're not sure and you just come to try to find out, you won't be around. Into the water. Uh, second phase is the dive phase portion of BUDS. Uh, it also builds teamwork, but it starts to incorporate a much greater learning process for the, for the guys going through. The majority of the evolutions that cause the students the most problem is the water work. Uh, if a guy isn't comfortable in the water, then he's not really cut out to be a frogman. Uh, he's got to keep his head about him when he's in the water if something goes wrong with his dive rig or something like that. So a lot of the pool work is, uh, is very stressful. Uh, you've got to be mentally in the game to make it through those evolutions. The men are subjected to continual calculated harassment by their instructors to see if they follow procedures taught in the classroom. Students are tumbled around and their mouthpieces torn from their mouths, simulating the effects of a strong ocean surge. Students are taught two types of scuba, open circuit using compressed air bottles and closed circuit using specialized oxygen recirculation equipment. San Diego Bay turns into a combat training area for practicing underwater navigation. The men are learning to use a specialized breathing apparatus, the Draeger LAR-5. It's a closed circuit underwater breathing apparatus designed for use in clandestine military operations in shallow water where concealment of telltale exhaust bubbles is essential. The Rock, San Clemente Island, where the windy northern tip of the island is Bud's country. It's at this modern compound that Class 224 will spend their final four weeks of training. Out here, it's the ideal training ground for them. We have uh, weapons ranges, demo ranges, and uh, a lot of good terrain for them to patrol in. On the windswept mesa overlooking the camp is the rifle range. It's here that the men will spend day after day of basic weapons training and maneuvering drills. A lot of guys come here have never shot a rifle before, so they have to start out at a really basic level, uh, just target shooting. Third phase is designed to finally teach these guys how to be SEALs. And we have to start off with basic rifle drills. And everything in third phase uh, is, is a gradual progression. Two, two, four. Hallelujah, two, two, four. You're so broken down from the first five months of buds. It doesn't matter what they do to try to build you up. Nothing works. You just, you just hurt. You just go on. When you guys get out in the teams, you're going to be asked to do things that you think is impossible. But here we're proving to you that it, maybe it's not so impossible with a little bit of planning and preparation. Do ya? Yeah. I think by far the, the toughest part is the daily grind. I don't think any individual day or any, any individual evolution is that hard. You know, it, it might be a 14-mile run or a 5-mile swim, but in a couple hours it's over. 
It's just the day-to-day -day grind. And they say it gets easier after Hell Week. But I think the easiest part of Bud's is, is Hell Week and prior. Because at post Hell Week, uh, a lot more is expected of you. And you just you just go day to day. You have so much they have to teach you. I think the tough, toughest part of the whole thing is, is just staying motivated for six months. <laughs> six months is a long time to, to do this every day, day in and day out. And, and it doesn't, doesn't get any easier. During Tactics Week on San Clemente Island, we teach them uh, a lot of different classes. Reconnaissance patrol over the beach, uh, prisoner handling, raids, ambush. It's all part of learning the tactics, tools that we use, tools that we need as SEALs to do our job. They're right now doing it in the daytime. You never do any kind of operation in the daytime in the SEAL teams, but they've got to learn it. So we need to be able to watch them and see what they're doing and making sure that they're doing it right. Out on this beach out here, we're going to be doing an obstacle load. We've got a bunch of obstacles underneath the water out there at about 10, 12 feet. We're going to be taking out, swimming out satchel charges filled with C4 explosives. We're going to be setting them down, uh, mounting them on the obstacle themselves. This is, of course, to simulate uh, blowing them up for an invasion force coming in that, you know, they might tear out the bottom of a landing craft. Uh, this is what, like, the original UDTs, their main purpose, their main job besides reconnaissance. Each one of these blocks is um, one and a quarter pounds of C4. And this yellow stuff you see coming out the front here, the top of it, this deck cord, this is what we use to tie into the, the, the trunk line. This is going to be run to each one of the obstacles that are out in the water behind me. Um, we tie in with a right angle knot into the trunk line so that when they detonate it from the shore up here, it all goes off at once. I think the biggest thing about it is, is for us, for all of us here, it's our last great evolution of buds. Very few ever get to where you are today. You only graduate from BUDS training once. It marks the completion of the toughest military training in the world. In a society where mediocrity is too often the standard and too often rewarded, there is intense fascination with men who detest mediocrity, who refuse to define themselves in conventional terms and who seek to transcend traditionally recognized human capabilities. This is exactly the type of person BUDS is meant to find. The man who will find a way to complete each and every task to the best of his ability. The man who will adapt and overcome any and all obstacles. I feel good. I like, it's like a huge weight lifted off his shoulders. I mean, obviously, everybody says, you know, this is the first step. Still a lot to come and stuff, but this is a big step, so. I feel on top of the world today. It's, it's been six months of arduous training, and it's just, I can't even describe how I feel. There's some points of training where you feel like you can't make it through one more day, but you press on hour to hour, minute to minute. And, eventually you get to this point. It's the person who, who wants to be here and ends up becoming a SEAL is the person who wants it deep down inside. And if he doubts that at all, then he just doesn't belong.